Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Going to be giving you my predicted 11 for Manchester United's game against Tottenham at Old Trafford. So I'm going to go with the 4-2-3-1 formation. In goal, David De Gea. Uh, David De Gea was in goal in the 4-1 defeat to Manchester City last weekend. De Gea made some very good saves in that game. De Gea is enjoying a very good season. He's now back to his best. De Gea is regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Um, earlier on this season, De Gea said, I don't see myself away from Manchester United. And in January, he got named the Premier League's Player of the Month. De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club and he's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. This season has been his 11th season at Man United, so reflecting on that, he's been a long servant. He's been with us since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. De Gea's contract at Manchester United expires next year. He receives £375,000 a week. Reflecting on that, he's the second highest earner at the club. Uh, right back, I'm going to go with Diego Delo. Diego Delo is our first choice right back under Rangnick. Uh, Delo hasn't started a game for a while because Anwan Bissaka started what the last three or four games. Uh, Bissaka played against Manchester City last weekend and he was very poor. But revert back to Delore, you know, Delore's been impressive under Rangnick. Do you think Delore will leave Man United this summer? He has been subjected to transfer speculation before. Last season, Delore had a loan spell with AC Milan. Reflecting on that, he gained some experience. We got Delore under Jose Mourinho. Manchester United paid £19 million for him. We got him from Porto. The Law's contract at Man United expires next year. The two centre backs are going, going to go with Raphael Varan and Harry Maguire. Uh, Raphael Varan missed the game against Manchester City last weekend. Most of the time when Varan plays, he seems to make the difference. Well, Varane is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a good pedigree behind him. You know, look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at Real Madrid. Earlier on this season, Varane had illness. I think he had pains in his stomach and he's had a couple of injuries as well since he signed for the club. Manchester United signed Varane from Real Madrid last summer. Paid £34 million up front for him, rises up to £41 or £42 million with add-ons. He's under contract to Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year. And Harry Maguire, um, he played last weekend against Man City. He was terrible, you know, defensively all over the place. He received a yellow card for that reckless challenge. I think it was on De Bruyne. And City's third goal got deflected off Maguire. Um, a lot of Manchester United fans want Maguire out. You know, Man United could look to sell Maguire in the summer. Prior to the game against Man City, he said Harry Maguire was upsetting his teammates in the dressing room. Can't understand how Harry Maguire is still the captain. You know, earlier on this season, a lot of Man United fans were demanding for the captaincy to be taken off Maguire. But um, earlier on this season, Rangnick said that Maguire will remain Man United's captain until the end of the season. 
Man United overpaid for Maguire, got him for £80 million. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and he's the second most expensive signing at the club. Maguire has been at Man United for over two years and he's endured quite a few injuries since he came at Man United. Left back, I'm going to go with Alex Tellez. Um, Alex Tellez has impressed me under Rangnick and he has appeared to be our first choice left back under Rangnick. But there again, Luke Shaw's played a lot of games recently. Uh, the reason Manchester United brought Tellez in, you know, was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. Manchester United got to Les from Porto. We got him in a deal worth fifteen point four million. Telez has been at Man United for um, around two years or so now. Centre midfield, I'm going to go with Fred and Scott McTominay. You know, Fred and McTominay do not complement each other in the centre of midfield, but that's who I think we'll go with against Tottenham. Uh, Fred, he has had his good games, especially under Rangnick, but he's still not good enough to represent the club. Manchester United got Fred a few years ago from Shatton and S, got him for £50 million. Pounds. Um, at Tominay, well, I said earlier on this season, he was one of our best performers under Rangnick. I don't think McTominay is good enough to represent the club. He has been part of the club for a long time. Uh, revert back to 2020, he committed his future to the club, McTominay, because he signed a five-year contract. The attacking midfielder, I'm going to go with Bruno Fernandes. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, of course, played against Manchester City last weekend. Fernandes is one of our best players and is certainly one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Fernandez has been at Manchester United for two years. Manchester United got him from sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Don't forget earlier on this season it mentioned that Fernandez rejected a new contract from Man United. He said Bruno Fernandez contract talks are postponed until the summer having turned down an offer last year. Fernandez is under contract to Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year. At the moment, he receives £100,000 a week. Um, left wing, I'm going to go with Jadon Sancho. Uh, Jadon Sancho uh, played against Manchester City last weekend. He scored a very good goal. It was a precise low strike. Sancho should have had another goal against City because he had a chance when he blazed it over the bar. I thought Sancho played well against Man City last weekend. You know, we're getting the best out of Jadon Sancho now, which is good news from a Man United perspective. Uh, Sancho, though, did enjoy a bad start to his career at Manchester United. You know, he didn't settle in straight away. He has not done as well as a lot of United fans expected. You know, Manchester United signed Sancho from Borussia Dortmund last summer. Got him in a deal worth £78 million with the add-ons included. Man United paid £73 million up front. He's under contract with Man United until June 2026 as an option of a further year. And before Man United, Sancho endured four years with Borussia Dortmund. He was good at Dortmund. On the right wing, Anthony Langer. Um, I think Alanga came on against Man City last weekend. Alanga's a good young player. He's done really well since he broke into our first team squad. Don't forget he came off the bench and scored a late equaliser against Atletico Madrid in the last 16 of the Champions League first leg. 
He also scored in the 4-2 win against Leeds. He wrapped that game up against Leeds because Ilanga scored the fourth goal. Um, earlier on this season, Rangnick said that Anthony Ilanga was close to leaving Man United. Earlier on this season, Ilanga got racially abused on social media um, after he missed a decisive penalty against Middlesbrough in the Cup. Ilanga's been part of the club for a long time. You know, he joined Man United's academy at the age of 12. And he's now 19, so he's still very young. And he's under contract with Man United until June 2026 as an option of a further year. And um, the striker, I'm going to go with Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, Ralph Rangnick has confirmed that Ronaldo is fit to play this game against Tottenham. Well, Ronaldo said he desperately wants to play against Tottenham. Ronaldo missed the game against Manchester City last weekend uh, due to a knock. Now, recently, Cristiano Ronaldo held crunch talks with his agent, George Mendes, over his Man United future. And Ronaldo has threatened to quit following his Derby Day absence. Good chance Ronaldo will leave Man United this summer, especially if Manchester United fail to finish in the top four. Well, Man United have already said that they'll allow Cristiano Ronaldo to leave. The last time Ronaldo scored was the 2-0 win against Brighton, but prior to the game against Brighton at Old Trafford, Ronaldo didn't score in his last six, so he's been out of form. Ronaldo is the best player in the world overall. He's won over 30 trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. Since Ronaldo re-signed for Man United, he's scored 15 goals in all competitions. He has over 800 goals in his career. And Man United re-signed Ronaldo last summer for £20 million with add-ons included. His contract at Man United expires next year. There's an option of a further year. Ronaldo is the highest earner at the club at the moment. He receives almost £500,000 a week. So that's how I think we could line up against Tottenham tomorrow. Um, this will be a difficult game against Tottenham. You know, Tottenham have got a good manager in Antonio Conte. You know, Conte has got a good pedigree behind him. You know, he's won quite a lot of trophies in his managerial career. Tottenham appointed Antonio Conte in back in November last year. And when Conte got appointed in, he signed an 18-month contract. Conte has been the Tottenham manager for around five months. Manchester United should have got Antonio Conte. You know, if we'd have sat Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool last year, I reckon we'd have got Antonio Conte. Before Antonio Conte, Tottenham had Nuno Espirito Santo. Uh, Nuno Espirito Santo endured a very short managerial tenure with Tottenham. He was only at Tottenham for four months. Tottenham sacked him earlier on this season. Before Nuno Espirito Santo, Tottenham had Jose Mourinho. Of course, Tottenham sacked him. And before Jose Mourinho, Tottenham had Mauricio Potocino. Uh, obviously, Tottenham sacked him. And Tottenham made a bad mistake sacking him because I thought Potocino was a very good manager at Tottenham, even though he didn't win anything. Potocino was the Tottenham manager for five and a half years. Don't forget, back in 2018, he got Tottenham to their first ever Champions League final. At one point, he almost won the league when he was Tottenham manager. Well, not so long ago, it said Mauricio Pochettino wants a Tottenham Hotspur return.
Uh, as you all know, Mauricio Pochettino is on the verge of being sacked by PSG after PSG's loss to Real Madrid in the Champions League. It said Pochettino is seeking for the Man United job. And uh, Man United players favour Mauricio Pochettino as the next manager. Um, Tottenham, you know, I do know a lot of the players they've got. Uh, they've got Steven Bergwijn. Tottenham got him from PSV. Uh, they've got Lucas Mora. That's very good. Hyung Min Sun. He's the best player that Tottenham have got. Um, Harry Kane. He's a prolific goal scorer. Harry Kane is regarded as one of the best strikers in the world. Harry Kane has been at Tottenham. For around 18 years. So he's been a very long serving player. He's under contract with Tottenham. Until 2024. Revert back towards the end of last season. There was reports coming out. Saying that Harry Kane had put a transfer request in. At Tottenham. And you know. Man United, Chelsea and City. And that all went in for him. I think last season as well. Harry Kane won the Golden Boot. He's won it a couple of times now. Um, Emerson Royal, uh, there's people that don't rate Emerson Royal, I think he's quite good. Um, Harry Winks, he's good. Oliver Skip, Tottenham have him, um, he's been out with injury. Uh, Ryan Sessingnon, um, he's not available for Tottenham because he's out with injury before Tottenham. Sessingnon was at Fulham and Hoffenheim. Tanganga, he's also not available because he's out with injury. Hoybier, he's very good for Tottenham. Tottenham got him from Southampton. They've got Joe Roden, Sergio Reguilon. Uh, Sergio Reguilon is a left back. Tottenham got him from Real Madrid. Uh, they've got Matt Doherty. Uh, Tottenham got Matt Doherty. From Wolves. Uh, Christian Romero. Um, I think Tottenham got him from Atalanta. They have Ben Davis, Davinson Sanchez and Eric Dyer. Uh, they've got Harvey White. And uh, Tottenham's first choice goalkeeper is Hugo Lloris. Let me put into the equation that Tottenham have lost players. Uh, the lone Tangai and... Done belly out to Leon. I just found out about that recently. I didn't know he went uh, out on loan to Leon. Well, Tottenham obviously got Tangai and Dumbele from Leon. You know, he's Tottenham's most expensive signing. Uh, in January, Tottenham let Deli Alley go. Deli Alley went to Everton from Tottenham. Uh, Tottenham have lost players like Danny Rose. He's now at Watford. They lost Toby Alder Weirald. They lost Eric Lamella and Serge Aurier quite a few years ago. Lost Christian Eriksen. You know, when Christian Eriksen left Tottenham, he went to Inter Milan. Obviously, Eriksen is now at Brentford. So, there you go. Uh, Tottenham won their last game against Everton 5-0. I think Tottenham are like seventh in the Premier League, something like that. This fixture at Old Trafford last season was 6-1 to Tottenham. It was the first time we'd lost 6-1 at Old Trafford since the 6-1 defeat to Man City back in 2011. Uh, Man United did win at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium last season. 3-1 came from behind in that game. and Man United won at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium earlier on this season. 3-0. You know, Man United have got to bounce back from that 4-1 defeat to Man City. This is a must-win game for Man United against Tottenham. Man United have done transfer business with Tottenham before because we revert back to a long time ago. We got Dimitar Berbatov off them and we also got Michael Carrick off them. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.